had been a pretty tough training camp and uh, been a really good training camp. Uh, on January 9th, I met with the team. I told them I'm not looking for the nine best ball players. I'm looking for the nine toughest players that can get out there and compete at the highest level for the Raging Cajuns and, and the Raging Cajun program. And the inner squad uh, competition has been intense, to say the least. And I think it's definitely, you know, it's, it's really stood out, the players that have um, grown and, and are ready to step on the field and represent our program. So that's exciting. To, uh, yeah, uh, Sunday um, was an off day. Today's Monday, right? Sunday was an off day. We scrimmaged Friday and Saturday. Those will be our last two inner squad scrimmages. Now, starting today, we'll, we'll, we'll scrimmage based on – it won't be a competition scrimmage. It's going to be based on getting the players that will be playing uh, this weekend at, at bats and making our lineup. We'll probably bat in our lineup very similar to what we'll bat on opening night. And we'll uh, ro work in rotations and try to get them a bunch of live ABs for, for, the, for the rest of this week. And um, – hopefully come out on fire opening weekend. Um, the good news, our pitching staff is extremely healthy. Our pitchers are throwing really well right now. Um, we don't have any sore arms. We don't have any medical issues at all with our pitching staff. So that's a good news. We do have several players just, uh, to different degrees of tweaked stuff. And uh, we'll hopefully have everybody back by weekend, but we may not. So we'll see how that plays out throughout the week as we get more information. Um, I guess that's pretty well it. Does it feel like six years? No, it doesn't. It just really feels like my, you know, in my mind, like third year. Uh, it's so good. Six years have gone by really fast. It's been really fun, um, continues to be fun. I think this schedule is uh, extremely um, – it's what I like. It, it's, it's bringing me a lot of excitement to think about playing this schedule. I, I do think the schedule is so tough that we could be a team that learns a lot, learns a lot more about our weaknesses, uh, or it could be a schedule where we learn about our strengths and realize we have more strengths than even we realize we had. Uh, it's going to be a, a revealing schedule. And I, you know, I don't want to mislead the fan base. It's, it's, we're going to play every game as hard as we can, and I think that it can go a lot of different ways. I mean, I think we could, we could obviously be where where we got enough youth on the field that we may have more to learn than I think we do, and then we've also got enough youth and and young players on the field that I think we might be able to accomplish more even than I visualize we can because I, I really have a lot of confidence in the talent level of the team. Um, but, it, you know, anything is, is somewhat unproven. So we, that's the idea that we got to go out on the field and compete and, and earn everything we want. You talked about how you're looking for the nine toughest players. How big of a factor is team toughness as far as a successful season? Yeah, I, I just think that what we – need to get over this next hump is you know you go back in history and you look like it you guys don't remember but the 1980 81 82 oakland a's you know they win the world series every year and their team batting average 249 you know um that's what i'm looking for like guys i just want i want warriors that know how to go out on that field and some way manufacture a win and not go out on the field expecting a win to come to them expect to go out and manufacture the win and so when you think of Players like that, like Maddie Hayden, that's what she is. She's a warrior on the ball field. If you watch the regional last year, she's out there playing. She doesn't feel good. She's got, you know, she, she just was under the weather with her, um, you know, whatever she had. She didn't have energy. But she, when the game started, she played with everything she had, a warrior for our program. And um, that's what I'm looking for, you know, those type of kids that's going to give us 100% effort, no matter whether we're six runs behind or we're six runs ahead. I wanted to look the exact same. I wanted to play the same way. So this weekend in these four games, are you still going to maybe do some position changes? Or, for instance, is the same girl going to play third base if they're healthy all yeah. games? Or what does that look like? If we're healthy enough, you'll see a lot of – if we're healthy enough, that we'll have a lot of moving parts. And if we're not um, – 
then you know we'll, we'll probably settle in with one lineup. So that's going to give you an overall indicator of where we're at. But we have to get healthy before Florida, the Florida trip, seven games on the road. We, we've got to take care of our kids this week and hope we get everybody where we want them. Coach, how big of an impact are you seeing from your, your freshman class so far? And how big of an impact can they make during the season? Uh, huge. Um, you know, I look, Maya Davis has allowed us to move Matty Hayden to from center field into the infield. Um, not Matty Hayden's an outstanding center fielder, and it's a you put either one out there. But Matty Hayden can also come in and be outstanding at third base. Uh, you can put her anywhere on the field. She's going to play. She, she's she's selfless, and. Uh, that's made us stronger as a ball club. So we didn't necessarily gain something in center field, but we are the same, and we got better at, at wherever we end up putting uh, Maddie that day. And then we've got uh, Sissy Vasquez in the middle infield, and there is no doubt like she's playing infield at a very high level. Um, I would compare it to Alyssa Dalton defensively. She's, she's just outstanding. And then Vic Valdez has really – really give us depth at catcher and you'll you'll see an outstanding defensive catcher when Vic Valdez is behind the plate. Coach, what's the main thing that you're looking uh to see from your team this weekend as they as they start the season? Uh you know to move from being uh training camp warriors to being Louisiana Raging Cajun Warriors against our opponent and that transition of becoming one unit and growing together, banding together. I want to see them band together and fight. Um, that's going to be the critical uh, thing that we need coming out of opening weekend and going to Florida. So does that, are you saying Maddie's starting at third and Jordan's in right, or, or where, where are y'all in those, that process? Maddie will, Maddie will definitely start some games at third this year. Um, I could, you know, we'll, we'll move her where we need her that day based on, she gives a lot of flexibility. Um, so opening night, I would expect her at third base, but we'll see. We got, it's, it just depends. She's a very flexible, you know, even last year we played her second a lot in the preseason and we just, but well, we had to have her in center field. And so that's a really luxury for a coach to have a kid like her. That's so, so good. And so, um, selfless that so she doesn't care. I mean, it doesn't matter to her, I don't think, at all. So I'm sure you've worked Jordan a lot in the outfield. How would she look there? She looks good. She looks good. She's playing good defense there. We've also had her at first. She looks good there. Um, just, you know, she's a pretty good athlete, pretty athletic. So, again, you know, I think she can move around. She doesn't care. From a batting perspective, you know, what are your kind of your expectations to see um, for your first couple of, of matchups? From the hitting perspective, well, you never know opening weekend, you know, if you come out on fire. But based on what I saw in the fall with games against McNeese and um, was it who else we played? Northwestern State? Uh, I thought our offense was really good. I mean, we put runs on the board, um, and I expect them to score runs, and I expect them to be, you know, good offensively. How good? I don't know. I think I'll know more about that tomorrow because I'm actually going to go through, like, we're going to have the one, two, and three hitters tonight in scrimmage. We're going to get a look at how they fit together, how they play together. And I think that'll get – I think tomorrow I'll have a lot better – uh, feel for that, but we we split everything equal for the first three weeks. So you got like you know your one and your two have been on different teams, and your three and your four have been on different teams. So I might just see them together again. But offensively, we should be fine this weekend. So are you more sure of your starting lineup right now, or where are your defensive alignment? Right now? Well, I, I sat down with my coaches this morning. And I you know I got their idea of who's the number one defensive player at each position, and now I've got to figure out how to make my offense work. Obviously, you know, when you go into this season, you know, if you look back last year, we hit, what, 350 as a team. This schedule is not going to allow anybody to hit 350. Um, but I do think we offensively are good enough. But I think we have to – we've got that luxury because of, we got a, enough depth offensively that we can look at defense more and put prioritize putting the best defensive lineup out there. And I definitely think you'll see that this weekend. You're going to see me make more decision based on who Coach Lacey wants out there for her defense than, than me saying I'm putting the ones that are going to score the most runs out there. 
So you're going to dictate to someone to actually write that on the lineup? or you gonna- <laughs> We'll see how long that lasts, right? Uh, probably last till we get beat six to five or seven to six. But no, I do really, I, I want to emphasize, I've said that since fall, and we've done that, we've prioritized, we've taken a lot of, we took a lot of defensive, uh, offensive time and put it into our defense. And, I, and like fan day, we didn't hit well. And I thought that was, you know, we hit a lot at, right after fan day, we've hit a lot because I thought it showed our hitters were a little bit behind. But I also thought, the, especially the first four innings of that game, showed how good our defense can be. And so you got to give something to get something. And, you know, I think that we've taken a little bit of time off offense to get to a better defense. And then I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, if I can hit 290 as a team and field 970 or 980 versus – hit 310 and field 950, I'm going for the 970. I, I want to put an emphasis on defense this year. Would you say that the defense um, is the thing that the unit that's impressed you the most during these uh, preseason practices? Yeah, I think that that's where the freshmen really stand out is that they're, they've made us a better ball club. Like they've made us, because of the defense we can put on the field, they've made us a better, better ball team. And I hope that's what the season bears out. But that's my take going into season. Is there anybody that, that in your mind, has really stepped forward in the circle or has looked good in the spring so far it's out of the whole group? I can't say one. I can say three. I think Carly Heath uh, has has really stepped forward from fall and continued on into the spring. And then I think Megan Shorman and Sam Landry have really grown up and and have a just been amazing this spring to me and not not just those two but coach justin coach justin uh, with his relationship with the pitching staff and then the adjustments that he's made to make sam landry a better pitcher and megan shorman a better pitcher and their adjustments to understanding what coach justin's trying to accomplish uh, i i think that it's really amazing what he's done in a short time and i think those those kids are ready to roll and that, anytime you feel that confident about your pitching, you feel really confident about your ball team. And that's all the more reason I want to put the defense behind them because they they really they really look good. So do you foresee using four different starting pitchers this weekend? Uh, not very often. I, I think we could. Uh, obviously, I have no no problem starting uh, Kendra or Carly at all. But I know in talking with Coach Justin and – just the way that everything's involved. One thing we learned last year, postseason honors, you know, like if you want to get a kid All-American, if you want to have a pitcher get All-American, they have to pitch 33% of your innings. So postseason awards, that's a factor where, and that's kind of, it's kind of designed in softball to go with a two-pitcher rotation. So I really think we'll use a two-pitcher rotation with a spot starter when one of those need rest or we have injuries. Um, but that, again, I'm going to leave that up to Justin a lot more this year than I did last year. He's, he knows the game now. He, he's been around. He's got a plan. He knows his pitchers way better than I do. And so a lot of things this year I can leave with him that last year I was more involved. And so, example, I probably saw Sam Landry throw – 200 pitches in the bullpen this you know this January whereas last year I would have saw her throw 2500 I'm, I mean it's Justin's show and he's doing an amazing job and and so all those questions on pitching rotation you really like when you interview him go to him and we'll see what he says but based on my conversation with him I fully expect he would say a two pitcher rotation with spot starter when needed